This is Homer and Gabe on ESPN Wisconsin and ESPNWisconsin.com. Download the ESPN app. It's free from Dave and Buster's. A Valentine's Day of memory. Homer and Gabe. Kabir Baja Biamila was going to be on at 5. Then I left a message that he wouldn't do it, wasn't going to be able to do it. I uh, finally checked the message. And then I just called him and said, well, what's the deal? And after a short discussion, he said, hey, call me. Call me back. I'll do it. So uh, we will wait a little bit here. Uh, he seemed, he, he seemed uh, willing. Don't feel like I forced him. I don't know if I'd be able to force anybody anyway. Um, and I don't want to really address the things that he brought up. I'll let him do that. And then, depending on how long it, depending on how long it goes, then uh, Jason Wood is available. Joining us now is Packer Hall of Famer KGB Kabir Baja Biamila. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you fine. So, do you go by KGB? I even have difficulty saying your full name now since it's probably been years. Does any? Does everybody call you KGB? Uh, I'll say, I guess people that call me KGB are ones that don't really know me, but it's Kabir. I mean, you call me Kabir, so. All right. And, and it's, some call me brother, so. <laughs> but uh, but I'm okay with KGB. I don't take it personal, so I, I, I it just it is what it is, so. I don't take it personal, uh, so call me KGB. Right. I, I, no, I, I'll, I recognize. I'll call you Kabir. I'll call you Kabir. I, That's I, fine. I, That's I, easy. I even, I, I even have a live show on YouTube called the KGB, the live, uh, the KGB live show, so. I don't take it personal, really. So <laughs> that uh, that was going to be my next comment because I listened yeah. to a portion of the KGB live show, episode ten. Um, yes, but I did want I wanted to address you. You had some second thoughts about doing the interview because I had sent you uh, the article from Forbes. Explain just your general thoughts or concerns. I, you know, I just don't want to, you know, like, obviously I'm creating, I have my own drama, but I, I'm not trying to, you know, I don't, I don't have any ill will towards uh, Aaron Rodgers. You know, I was, you, you know, you asked me, uh, you know, off the radio, uh, uh, why did you, you know, you, you never said anything bad about him. I said, well, no one ever asked me that question. So um, somebody did. And uh, there was a guy that, that used to work at the Packers. And now I sound, I sound like he was at Forbes, which I didn't know about. But it doesn't matter. But I just gave him my, my honest answer. I just wanted to, I mean, I just gave him my honest answer. Nothing, I mean, it, I mean it's the truth. I didn't, I didn't tell a lie. It was just truthful um, from, my, from my perspective, you know, and it is from my perspective. So, The other question was, and it'll be short, that you were only there a short period of time when he was actually the starter, right? Do I have the years right? Uh, what year did he become the starter? I thought I was there for three years. I was there for Mike McCarthy. Well, Brett was there with Mark McCarthy one year, right? So two years. Right. Is that right? I thought. I left, I, I'm not I left sure. In, I left in 2008, but I, I saw Aaron Rodgers when he came into the league. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you know, he was a, he was a uh, I thought he was a devout Christian at the time, you know, b- meaning to believe in the Bible and everything. And then, um, Obviously, when he became a starter, there was a change, even even leading up to that point. And um, I, I know we had some type of, um, I don't know what we were talking about in the locker room. I can't even remember. But all I know is that he made it known that he was the uh, he's the man or the leader or something like that. And um, and I, came, I, I guess they rubbed me the wrong way just how he came at me as being a veteran. And, and then we had the likes of somebody like Brett Favre. Who when I when he introduced when when I met Brett Far for the first time I was a rookie coming to the Packers and he came to me and introduced himself as Brett Far as if I didn't know who he was <laughs> I played with him in a video game but I just thought that that was a down to earth man for him for what he had accomplished he's already won the Super Bowl uh, three time MVP and and for him to come to me as a rookie I was just a fifth rounder and to introduce himself. And um, I just thought that the the, 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 the type of uh, man or the leadership uh, between the two uh, was a contract is a, is a big difference. Uh, but now, you know, uh, now let me let me let me say this. Obviously, I caught Brett towards the end of his career. I mean, I played half of that, um, half of his career. But I caught him towards the end, so I know he was a young man, and and I don't know how he was. He was young, so I, I'm catching um, Aaron Rodgers when he was young. So I don't know what Aaron Rodgers is like today, 
But I just know when he was a rookie to becoming a starter, I just thought it was just a little bit on the arrogant side. Talking with KGB, I would add this. You didn't put it in, but you just mentioned and and your faith or the thought that Aaron Rodgers was a Christian could easily have influenced that opinion because you would have thought he would have been a certain way given that he said he was a Christian versus how he used the phrase the man. Is that a fair comment? Yeah, that's fair, but there was more that led up to that because obviously I was causing some controversy in the locker room um, at towards the end of my career. They're really just challenging people on uh, living a holy life. and um, But I didn't get a lot of support from Christians, actually. Um, they were my biggest um, um, persecutor. And I was still, I still considered myself a Christian at that time. And, um, but I was just trying to share the gospel according to the Bible. Um, but mm-hmm. I'm, as, as I live, as I live today, I'm starting to learn that, uh, Christians don't, don't follow the Bible. Uh, they follow, you know, traditions. <laughs> K- KGB, follow, uh, KGB, can I, can I interject yes, just a second? Yes, yes, yes sir. You yes, sir. just discovered that now? Like, uh, well, 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 the reason why well, I let me give you an example. Be, My faith yes. is very important to me. John three mm-hmm. sixteen is it? That's it. Okay. I believe okay. every Christian has to believe that. But there's clearly a debate about the rest of the Bible and how much you believe, and that people do it differently. Like all the different forms of Christianity. I am shocked that that wasn't clear to you. How long have you been a Christian? Because your parents, you, they were Muslims originally, correct? Or- uh, yeah, my mom, my mom was a Christian. Dad was a Muslim. But I, I became a Christian in 2000. So I've been a right. Christian. It's just been a year and a half that I left the Christian faith. And now I'm, I'm more of a, a, a Hebrew Israelite by uh, birth, but just by in, um, in faith as well, too. But um, the reason why I didn't see it, because I assume everyone was like me. I did take the Bible seriously. Right. I, did read, I yeah. did read the Bible and so you just assume that I'm just doing what, because, you know, everybody said, hey, read your Bible. So if they're telling you to read your Bible, you're just thinking that, well, okay, I did read. I actually, I actually took the counsel and read my Bible every day and, and read it seven. I read the Bible from Genesis to the Revelation seven times in the course of 16 years. So I just assume everyone was doing that. But I'm learning now that uh, that's not true. Everybody just do what their pastor tells them to do and, and from a Christian perspective, what gets me in trouble is that I actually do what the Bible says to do. So I'm a commandment keeper, and Christians are not a commandment keeper from, 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 my, from my circle of people that I've dealt with. And I've dealt with a lot of people, even Reggie White uh, even came to that conclusion towards the end of his life. And I remember him trying to share that with me at the time, but I was just a young buck. I, mean, I think it was in 2001 or two, um, but then shortly he passed away. But he came into the truth. And uh, he got uh, he got um, persecuted as well, and um, and so now I'm experiencing what he was going through. So in his heart, it's very hard. So talking with uh, Kabir Baja Biamila, member of the Packer Hall of Fame, what did he tell you then? Because I'm certain you remember it. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember. And 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 at the time, I didn't have the uh, the knowledge, but we we used to talk on the phone uh, late at night and. Um, and obviously, I had a high, obviously a huge respect for Reggie White, the minister of defense, and and thinking like, wow, I'm on the phone to Reggie White. But but when you overcome that, we start having some real discussion. And big, pretty much his thing was it was Jesus plus the law, and pretty much what he was basically quoting was in Revelation uh, 14:12, where it says, uh, "These are the saints. The saints are those who keep the commandments of Yah, or God, and um, in English, and then uh, and believe in Jesus Christ." And so uh, if you look at 1 John chapter 2, verse 3 to 4, it says, you know that you know him if you keep his commandments. And those who say they know him and keep not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in them. And so uh, obviously when you're in Christian churches, they don't really highlight those uh, verses. But if you look at the New Testament alone, you'll be blown away how many times Jesus said, even in John 14, you mentioned John uh, uh, 3.16, but if you keep reading there, you'll see it comes down to, to being a doer of the Word. But even John, Jesus said in John uh, 14, uh, 15, uh, and, I, and I may be misquoting there, but he said that basically, if you keep my commandments, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And so 
Uh, we all know that uh, Jesus loves us. We always say Jesus loves, Jesus loves. What would Jesus do? Well, how do we show him that we love him? And the way we show him that we love him is keeping his commandments. So the commandments are still alive today uh, than it was when Jesus uh, lived. The only thing that's changed, and it's not that it necessarily changed, but it's been fulfilled, is that you don't have to sacrifice because Jesus was the, was the perfect lamb. So you just got to put your faith in him. Talking with KGB, I would not say this because I have no difficulty understanding your passion, but I'm sure you're aware that some people just given by some of your YouTubes, they think you're crazy. Like, you're just totally oh. nuts. You have totally lost it. And my answer is, he's not crazy or nuts. He has a particular strong view of his faith and of religion, and that is a part and the basis for everything you say. Is that correct? Well, well, yeah, I, and I understand that, people, but you know something? It, it's, you know, I wear it with a badge of honor because Jesus was called crazy. He was so called, he was crazy, uh, so crazy they had to kill him. Uh, if you really want to know what it's like to live with Jesus, live with me for a few days. You know, I, I had a wife uh, who I, you know, had children with, uh, about eight, eight of them, actually, and, um, and once I started keeping the commandments just like Jesus, she left. And so people think they love Jesus, but when you really start walking like Jesus, according to the Bible, people will persecute you. I mean, I'm, not, I'm no greater than Jesus. If Jesus was persecuted, who am I? I'm just a servant. And so uh, they thought Jesus was crazy. They thought that uh, they falsely accused him. Um, and, and, you know, the Bible also talks about the wicked flee when no one pursue, but the righteous is bold as a lion. I can't get a Christian to sit down and tell me why they think I'm crazy. It's, I mean, it's good to make those assertions. You can make assertions and say, well, I think you're crazy. I'll tell you why I think you're crazy. Okay, Tim, I'm ready. Because forgiveness is as integral a part of faith as everything you brought up. And the inability to understand that and forgive people and accept that as part of the big picture is hard for me to well, 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 see. Well, 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 you're making an assertion that I don't believe in forgiveness. I mean, without I, I won't even get to heaven if I don't forgive. The Bible says if your brother sins against you seven times 70, right, right. you forgive him. He says if you can't forgive those who, who, who uh, offended you, your Heavenly Father won't forgive you. So... Forgiveness is a big part. I've never said that I don't forgive. I, so that's a. Uh, I don't know where you're getting that from. I don't. Well, so no, I, I would say right KGB. Now. I would say the tone that you spoke of with your teammates when you addressed some of them in the locker room. Uh, I would say I would wonder about your wife. I would wonder about your ability to forgive and move on and accept the incredible differences that exist with people whose faith is every bit as strong as yours, but different. I don't, I, 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 you, well, what you are calling an act of unforgiveness or maybe a lack of love is actually an act of love. Think, think about this for a second. I, you know, maybe you can call it a curse. I may call it a blessing, but it feels like a curse, to be honest with you. But when you go around and you've been exposed to the truth, especially, it's like kind of being in a matrix, right? Like Morpheus was telling Neil, you know, you, we're in the system, right? And the very people you're trying to save don't want to be unplugged. And, and, and they would do everything in their power to fight to keep that system, you know? So until then, they're your enemy. But when I saw people in the locker room, and when I saw, like, my family, my wife, my children, you have to understand, I, I, it was hard for me to know what I believed to be true and to know that the people that I was around, the people I played ball with, the people I bled and sweat with, the people I worked out with, I mean, I spent more time with them than I did with my own wife and children, and you, you, you tend to have a love for them. And so I love them. I love I, I love the guys that I played with, and so why would I keep something that's true? If, if, they're, if they're living in such a way that I believe it will send them to hell, the loving thing I can do is to tell them the truth. Now, it's up to them if they accept it or reject it, and I understand that when people hear the truth, they, you know, they will think you're crazy, they, will, they, will, they don't want to hang out with you or whatever. I get it. I mean, I'm not crazy. I've, I, I've been in the public eye for a very long time. I know how to cater to the media, tell them what they want to hear. I know how to get attention if I want to get the positive attention I need. Uh, but when you tell people the truth, people don't want to know the truth. That's the, that's the unfortunate. Our hearts, you know, people are wicked. Uh, we like to think everybody's good. We like to think everybody wants to know the truth. But not everybody wants 90% of people don't want the truth. 
And so when you tell somebody the truth in love, the way they take it tells you where their heart is. And so if they love their sin, they're going to hate you. If they, if they, if they, if they're humble, they will love you. So it really depends on who you talk to to tell you the truth. Talk with KGB. Majority, so, but go the, ahead. But majority, the majority will be offended because the you know the gate to hell is wide, and very and many people are going there, and the gate that leads to heaven is narrow, and very few people find it. So. Uh, so I'm not surprised that a lot of people would think I'm crazy, but there's a few people that actually say, thank you so much. It's changed my life. So, All right. Talking with KGB. So from that standpoint, what I, I'm a fan of Aaron Rodgers. I like him. I like what he does. I don't assume he's perfect. What's the truth that you would want people to fairly feel or see about him based on your experience? Well, my experience goes back to almost 10 years ago, so I don't think that's okay. fair to Aaron Rodgers. So I just well, no, it's fair. You. You're right. It's fair to say this occurred a long time ago and may yes. not in any way be reflective of how he is now. Yes. That's and probably got to be the start. I, 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 yes, and I cannot, be, I cannot tell you. I have not talked to Aaron Rodgers in a long time. Uh, it's not like he takes my calls, or you know, and I don't think he's trying to reach out to me, so... I don't, I don't really know Aaron Rodgers like that, but we did do Bible study together. We were the part where we were close in the beginning, and then we, we uh, you know, like I said, uh, we, dist- we got distance, uh, you know, when I was sharing the gospel in the locker room uh, with the lack of support from not just him, but a lot of Christians in the locker room. So Aaron Rodgers is not the only one. But then from just things I read, I, now I'm just a guy like you. I, I just go off of what I read in the paper and Aaron is no longer a Christian or believing, you know, God. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going off of what I've heard in the papers and stuff. So I have no idea. I'm, I am no different than a, uh, a fan in that regard. The, the only key- thing I have is the beginning. I just know I played with him in the beginning of his career. But And then you made it, you made it clear to me that the reason nothing had ever appeared like this before is not because you didn't think it. No one ever asked. Yeah, no one ever asked me. I mean, I'm a defensive end. I guess you wouldn't really um, ask. I mean, I know some people now, fans who have asked me, hey, is he a believer? Because they may have saw an article or whatever. I said, just pray for him. Because I don't like to lie. You have to understand, I don't want to be in a position to lie. And obviously, if you don't give an answer, then, then, you, then you need people to, to wonder why is he not giving an answer. There must be, because if it was a positive, you would say something. And if it was a negative, you tend to hide. But I'm just saying, hey, here's the truth. I mean, if somebody say they want to pray for I say pray for him. Um, he's not what you think he is, but just pray for him. Pray for him that he'll come to, you know, that he have a true relationship with the Most High. Um, you know, but like I said, I love the guy. I love, I love people, you know, um, but I love, you know, um, but unfortunately not a lot of people, you know, will probably feel the same about me. I don't know. I, I can't really answer that question how people feel about me. But, um, but that's how I used to answer to fans when they would ask me, you know, I'm doing autograph signing, but a reporter never asked me that. I don't really, I, I can't remember that. Um, so I guess I guess when he called me with the whole when he uh, when Mike McCarthy got released or uh, got fired and then um, I got a call and um, sometimes I always get nervous doing football questions because I don't watch football so much anymore. So <laughs> I love the fact that you're talking more about my faith. That one I do know very much about. You know, our finance as a financial advisor, but other than that, when it comes to football, I got to kind of cheat a little bit and call my brother Akbar, say, "Hey, what's going on? Who's current?" <laughs> you know, so. That's the honest truth. So, talking with KGB. So I went to your website. So for people who know, you have KGB. The live show is episode ten. It's like an hour and ten minutes. KGB. I don't need that much time. But I did watch the video in which you posed the question as to whether or not your wife should get half of your revenue based on what's in the Bible and stuff like that. And I thought, KGB. Yeah, she gets half. It's, yeah, according, that's, the, according, that's the world we live in. That's the world we yeah. live in. Even if there are biblical quotes that disagree with that, I thought. I mean, what prompted yeah, right, you to yeah. pose that as a question? But because, and, so because, again, this is. Go ahead. No, no, no. It's a good question. Uh, one, like I said, there's a lot of stuff that I didn't know coming to Christianity. One of the things is that. Uh, I would agree, I would encourage people not to get a marriage license because once you get that marriage license, your marriage goes from a biblical marriage to now a secular marriage. And so now your marriage would no longer operate according to the Bible. And so I didn't know that 
I was naive. I did what my pastor told me to do. Matter of fact, they use words like shacking up or having sex before uh, having sex before marriage, which is impossible according to the Bible because once you have sex, you're married. That's your woman. Um, so um, and me getting uh, uh, doing the whole uh, marriage license, yeah, according to Wisconsin law, she is entitled to half according to the law of the land. But according to the Bible, if we're truly if we're true brothers and sisters in Christ, she would get nothing. Um, that's according to the Bible. But like I said, I ignorantly uh, signed a, a, a contract, a marriage contract with the state, and um, I end up uh, giving up my biblical rights when I did that. But I didn't do it knowingly. I did it ignorantly. And so now I'm trying to educate people to learn from my mistakes so they don't make the same mistake as well. Because a lot of people <laughs> think they're, they're living in sin if they're having sex before getting a marriage license. And that's not true. That, that is actually... Actually, it's a sin to get a marriage license because the Bible says in Proverbs 31, 3, don't give your strength over to a woman, especially uh, uh, the strength that would destroy your uh, the, a king's kingdom. And so it's actually I more have, of a I, sin. I, I, my last question about this, cause, but like, so what do you think of me? I just disagree with you. I've read the Bible not that many times. I don't agree with your version. Like the Bible says this and I don't. So like, does that. What what would well, be your view of me? Well, well, well I, I just think I, you're I, I, wrong. I, I know you think I'm wrong, but you know something. I I would love, and I know this is not going to happen. Because you, if you are, if this happens, you'll be the first. But if you pull out your Bible and you read the stuff that I'm basing my uh, my belief, I, I, I'm aware of that. I'm aware of that. Yes, you, you would agree with the statement. Now, you you would agree. That the statement says what it says. Now you may now have to come to a point and say, "Well, I disagree with the Bible." So it's easy to disagree with me, but when you disagree with me, you're disagreeing with what the Bible says. Now, right now, it's not like we're pulling out the Bible, but I am trying to put references out there so people can go do their own homework and say, "Yep, right. it says it right there." Exodus twenty-one, Exodus twenty-one ten makes it very clear that if a woman uh, leaves, she can leave if she's not getting food, shelter, conjugal rights. She can leave, and she leaves without money. That's what it says in there. Now I can't. I, didn't, uh, I, I didn't, understand. I didn't that was written in yeah. KGB. Yeah. That was written in the time thousands of years ago when the so world was actually, different in terms of the way women were treated. But you, you, right? you're, you're absolutely you're, you're absolutely right. The world has okay. changed drastically. But here's what hasn't changed. According to the Bible, he says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Even in the Malachi, sure. it says God says He does not change for or before He uh, uh, for our sake, so He doesn't consume us. So yeah. We change, but God doesn't change. And so I'm not trying to follow the world. I'm trying to follow the one that doesn't change, the pillar, which is the most high. So I follow Jesus Christ, who doesn't change. And you're right, uh, times change, and sometimes they, they come back again to it again, and people, the afro is back, the, the bell bottom is back, and, you know, this is in, and that's out. <laughs> you're right, people change. Uh, but uh, I don't put my, I don't, I don't live on the emotional roller coaster like that. That's why I put my faith in Jesus because there's a peace that passes all understanding when you put your faith in him. I agree with that. KGB, I appreciate you agreeing to do this. Uh, I think what I want to make sure people are aware of as far as Aaron Rodgers, uh, this, uh, you were never asked. Uh, this is what you believe. This is your impressions of the way Aaron Rodgers was many years ago. Don't have yes. any knowledge of, of the way he is now. Um, but uh, this is, as it stands, accurate, and you believe every word that you said. You wouldn't change any of it. Uh, but understand this was many years ago, and you don't want to speak for him now. How's that? Exactly. I appreciate that. I appreciate you making that clear. Thank you. Yes. And, uh, so, and, uh, and sh shorten, up, shorten up your live show. Come on, KGB. I don't have an hour. I want 15 well, I, we, minutes we, we, of your best stuff. That's it. Uh, all right. We can do 15 minutes. Uh, but there's, but there's <laughs> some people. So I do, I do stuff for 15 minutes, but then there's some, there's some real learners, people who really love the word. And they like the hour, and they say keep it going because it's changing lives. So uh, you can watch it for 15 minutes, and then if 15 minutes doesn't do enough for you to want to watch uh, more, yeah, then you have right. the freedom to turn it off. So there you go. Well, it, it, it still, I, it still helps like... with my it still helps with my views. So it still helps with my views. So <laughs> I don't know if it matter how long you watch it for, but if you watch it for 15 minutes, uh, it's all good. It's still supporting me, so I appreciate that. KGB, I think we're, uh, I don't know that any two people could ever disagree more about the Bible and everything, but I do believe we'll both be in heaven. So 
Uh, I hope you think the I same. Don't know and, about uh, that. I, I don't I, I don't know about I can't I don't know about that. If you're not keeping the commandments, there's a good chance you're not gonna make it to heaven. So I'm right. just I'm being I'm being honest because I love you enough to tell you the hey. truth. Now you may disagree, but I I I'm, I'm hoping I, that you will say I repent and I will start keeping the commandments and believe in Jesus. Uh, we got the last. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Kind of just uh, yes and no. And, but again, we will talk again one time, KGB. I look forward to you watching more football and commenting on that. You are the all-time sack leader before Clay Matthews beat you, and you are one of the elite eight percent, like Mark Tauscher in the Packer Hall of Fame. We'll just yeah, have to continue. Our, we'll continue. I'll come on your hour show. We'll continue to disagree, or you'll just you'll just give up on me. But I don't think so. Thanks, KGB. Thanks up. for coming. <laughs> All on. right. Thank you. Thank you for having you me. Bet. You bet. You bet. Kabir Baja Bia Mila. I'm up ten beers. Next.